Well, welcome to lecture number 46 of the Statistical Thermodynamic course. Now, as you can see over here, so uh, uh, the non resonance so if we see these expressions that we wrote okay, of A1 naught and A, A, A naught uh, dot, so if we look at these, it is now seen that the non resonant higher, if we now, if we say, let us neglect, neglect the, the non-resonant higher frequency terms. Higher frequency terms. Okay. Uh, so as their effects essentially average to zero because they are rapidly oscillating functions of time. So we define, we define Delta is omega one zero. So therefore, the equations for a naught dot that is the variation of a naught omega r delta a one two a one dot is equal to i e minus a two so these two equations that you see over here, okay, they can be actually solved analytically. The difference delta is often called, this is called the detuning frequency. Okay, since it measures how far the electromagnetic radiation of angular frequency omega is tuned away from the resonant frequency. Because this tells us that how much the, the electromagnetic radiation, EM radiation, radiation of frequency omega, okay, is tuned away okay, from the resonant frequency. The resonant Let's see, omega one zero. Okay, so this is called the detuning frequency. And you also realize that why the non resonant higher frequency terms can be neglected because they essentially average out to zero because of their, you know, fast because they are very rapid in nature. Okay, so now that we know the solution uh, to these two uh, first order simultaneous equations, these are two first order so the differential equations with initial conditions are initial conditions are okay a0 at 0 is equal to 1 and a1 at 0 is equal to 0 for the system or the system okay initially in the wrong state, all right, e equal to zero, all right. So therefore now, a naught d will solve to cos Let me write it down and then we will go term by term. E minus I2 and A1 D. In which, where it's omega to omega r square plus delta square half. Okay. That is what your omega is. So, this solution, if you just substitute, you will see that they actually agree with the equations that we are talking about. 
So the time dependent probability that the system would be found in the excited stage, so the time dependent probability, probability that the system will be found in the excited stage, excited state is given by, given by is equal to omega square so so that this is the time dependent probability that a system will be found in the excited state okay. be found in the excited state where the corresponding time dependent probability that the system will be found in the ground state corresponding time dependent probability that system will be a ground state ground state is given as one minus a one square equal to 1 minus omega r square omega square sine square okay so at resonance resonance okay. delta detuning frequency is equal to 0 this is equal to omega r okay so in that case your a1 square becomes sine square omega r t by 2 and a naught square okay, becomes 1 minus sine square omega r t by 2 is also equal to cos square omega r t by 2. Okay. So this transition probability now the, the probability the transition probability a1 square can be now plotted for two, three different detuning frequencies. So let us draw that. Okay. So this axis now has A1 bar, and this is T divided by 2 pi omega r. Okay, and this is 0 0.51. Two. Okay. okay, so when the detuning frequency is zero, in zero, so like this, okay. so this is a detuning frequency zero. Okay. Then let's take detuning frequency equal to the rabbi frequency. Okay, so that will be given as uh, it's a little bit like this. And so on and so forth. So this is drawn for delta is equal to uh, omega r. And then if you go to the detuning, even smaller detuning frequency, so this is with delta equal to 3 omega. So this is the plotting. So the meaning of the rabbi frequency now becomes clear if you look at uh, these two equations. So that if we look at this equation, which was 
e by h bar and if you look at the equation which is a1 bar square is equal to sine square omega r t by 2 okay okay so the rabbi frequency is being clear from this the, the system is coherently cycled coherent cycle that is with no abrupt changes in the phases of the amplitude of the wave functions between the ground state and the excited state by an electromagnetic uh, radiation at resonance the system is completely inverted after a time of pi by pi r so if you look at it this is basically your one so at the resonant frequency the system is inverted you can see it is inverted completely at the resonant condition so uh, it's completely inverted between the ground and the excited state. And this inversion happens after the time, which is given as T pi, which is a pi by omega r. Okay, off resonance, while at off resonance, there is a reduced probability of finding the system in an excited state, which is also shown in this particular figure, that these are at detuning cases when the incident radiation is detuned by detuned by that particular amount you'll find that the system will have a reduced probability to begin with the system will have a reduced probability to begin with and that is exactly what happens over here this probability is reduced if you further detune it it is the, the probability of the system existing in that particular excited state this is about 0.5 you can imagine how low this is Okay. So, uh, so we've got two things. At resonance, the system is completely inverted after a specific time scale. We also understood the meaning of the rabbi frequency. If you look at these two terms over here, these two expressions, and off resonance, there is a reduced probability because of the detuning nature. So this is a picture of a coherently driven system that has ignored all decay processes, such as spontaneous emission uh, from the excited stage. So the spontaneous emission of a photon will bring the coherence of the emission, coherence of the excitation, and reset the system to the ground state. Similarly, collisions, okay, collisions can also uh, cause relaxation in the system. In fact, collisions can reset the phase of the wave functions, okay, without changing any of the population. So these phase-changing collisions also interrupt the coherent cycling of the system. So all these things, uh, all these things are actually present. Okay? So if you have a system now, if you consider a system in which there is a relaxation process going on, let's draw this. This is time, and this is once again a one prime. So that is the probability. So undamped system will have very nice. Okay, so this is one. Okay, moment you start have damping. Okay, this will start to decay. And so on and so forth. So at the relaxation processes, so these are the damped systems because of relaxation. Okay. So, uh, so the effect of, for example, collisions of collisions, collisions, and other relaxation phenomena is to damp out coherent cycling of the system. Cycling of the system, the system also called the rabbi oscillation. oscillations. However, the rabbi oscillations can be observed in any quantum system by just increasing the intensity of the radiation. This increases the applied electric field. So at some point, the rabbi cycling frequency exceeds the relaxation frequency. And the coherent behavior will be observed. And the coherent behavior will be observed. Okay. So if omega r is much, much greater than omega relaxation, okay. A coherent behavior behavior okay, uh, or which is called the rabbi cycling 
will, will be observed. observed. Sometimes you do it by increasing the radiation intensity. Increasing the radiation intensity. Okay, now there are NMR and other processes which can actually do that. Okay, so the so we can see that how collision processes and even like stimulated or rather spontaneous emission can also you know break this coherent cycle. They break the coherent cycle. Okay, coherent cycle of the system. Okay, so uh, that is good. So now that we know that what it is, so we can now then, you know, uh, got an idea, fairly good idea of what. It is. So next, we are going to do something called, which is very relevant to absorption spectroscopy. Okay, so uh, that will be uh, called the Beer's law. So let's take a look at thing that we are going to do next is Beer's law. Okay, so consider a system uh, like this. You draw it first. Okay, so this is like a one meter by one meter. Okay, and there are two energy levels, say one and one. And there is radiation which is coming at this. Okay, so this is a system where there are N naught molecules. Is n not 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 no molecules n not molecules per cubic meter meter in the ground state state and n one are molecules in excited state okay so there is a flux of photons flux of photons. Okay, which is given as F naught is equal to I naught by H. Okay, is incident on this left face of the cube. So if you consider this to be the left face of the cube, this is the left face of the cube where there is an incident uh, photon which is in the unit of meter square uh, second inverse. Okay, which is incident upon the left face. So all these photons, what they will do. They will travel through the system and they can be absorbed or they can induce stimulated emission. So what is the intensity of the radiation after a distance, say, L? Okay, after a distance, L. And this is a differential section, which is dx. Okay. So this is a distance L of the box. Okay, so there is a flux of photons. These photons can either be absorbed or they can trigger stimulated emission. So what is the intensity after a certain length L in this particular box? Okay. So let us do that. dn1 by dt is equal to minus dt1 to 0 rho n1 plus d 0 to 1 rho n0. We'll see what what uh, rho is rho is basically i by c is equal to h f c by c okay now coming from this expression after this what would happen d n1 by dt is equal to 2 pi square mu 1 naught square p mu naught 
h square. We will see how to get to this actual expression. Okay, so that will be a part of a tutorial. G v minus v naught the root. Now you may be thinking that what this g is and what this uh, other things are. So we will take a detour right here. Okay, after this is done, after this expression is done. So this is mu one naught square b by b mu naught epsilon naught eight c n naught minus n one g b one zero into f. This gives rise to d n one by d t is equal to sigma f n naught minus n one. Okay where sigma is equal to 2 pi square mu 1 square divided by 3 epsilon naught h c g p minus b one okay this has got a dimension of meter square okay the physical interpretation of sigma is as an effective area that the molecule presents to the stream of photons of flux f so this is basically the effective area, effective area that a molecule, that molecule presents, presents to a flux of photons. Okay. Yes. Now, of course, here you notice a few things like G and how did I get these expressions? to see over here for that we need to take a little bit of a detour and try to understand that what happens uh, you know on when once radiation interacts with matter now uh, in order to do that in order to do that okay, uh, let us now take it case by case basis and well try to get a reasonable idea that how the buildup of the of the, the population and excited state happens and how relaxation is actually important in taking away uh, you know these transitions breaking the coherency of these transitions and how they lead to what we call something called a line shape function okay so for that we need to take a little bit of a detour okay and try to find out that how these absorption coefficients uh, can be evaluated uh, from the from the first principles so for that we first so here is a case for a small detail okay so if you recall that the magnitude of force of it, attraction between two electric charges force of attraction action between two electric charges electric charges are given as f Q1, Q2 divided by 4 pi epsilon r square, right? Okay, so uh, there is, of course, a half term, but you're not going to go over there. Since a typical electronic transition has a lifetime of about 10 na nanosecond, the effect of rabbi cycling are already present at one watt. Okay, at megawatt or higher power levels of pulse lasers, for example, what we get. The coherent effect of strong radiations are even more pronounced, provided electrical breakdown is avoided. At these high electric field strengths, however, the simple two-level two model is not a good description of a molecular uh, system. Okay? Uh, so, uh, so that is the prelude. Okay? So you understand that a typical electronic transition lifetime is about 10 nanoseconds. So the effect of rabbi cycling is present, which is a coherent cycling. So at higher pulse levels, higher power levels, we can see that the rabbi cycling can be even more pronounced. It is pronounced even at one watt. Okay. So there is also much confusion about the various terms and symbols in the field of radiometry. Uh, intensity of a laser beam can be called irradiance in radiometry. In radiometry, intensity and spectral intensity are used for power per steradian and power per steradian for herbs respectively. So there are all kinds of nomenclature issues as well, okay? So the, so, uh, 
So these are the things uh, that are there. However, the spectral radiance of a black body, spectral radiance of a black body is given as rho v c by 4 pi, which is equal to 2 h cube by c square into 1 by h u by kt minus 1. So the case of weak electromagnetic radiation interacting with the system is also common. In fact, before the the development of lasers in the 1960s, weak field K is applied to all regions of the spectrum except the radio frequency and the microwave region. For powerful, for which powerful coherent sources were available. Okay, in the weak field case, there is a negligible buildup of population in the excited stage. So, for weak field, weak field, non laser, okay, A1 is almost equal to 0 and A0 is almost equal to 1. As a result of that, A1 dot is I omega R by 2 E minus I delta T. Okay, so this is this can be readily integrated okay, to get A1 I omega R by 2 0 to T E minus I delta T. T. So A1 is omega r by 2 delta e i minus delta t minus 1. So probability of finding the uh, system in the excited stage after a time t is then obtained from this particular equation that we have written over here. Okay, so e 1 0 to 1 that is the probability is a 1 square therefore given as omega r square delta square sine square delta t by 2 okay, uh, is equal to equal to u1 naught square e square h bar square sine square omega minus omega 1 naught t by 2 divided by omega minus omega 1 square. So this formula is deceptive because it assumes monochromatic radiation and short interaction times. These requirements are inconsistent with one another because of Heisenberg's uncertain principle. So in the next class we will see that how some of these things actually unfolds. Okay, but this is the probability of finding something in the excited stage for a weak field of radiation.